let's there we go. Welcome everyone from all around the world to WordPress through the terminal. Um, your speaker today will be Milana Kapp from Serbia today. Thank you so, so much for agreeing to walk us through this presentation. Um, and yeah, I I'm sure you have a lot of great content to go through. So I'm going to be quiet and let you take the stage. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I am uh, in love with WPCLI and um, terminal in general. Let me just hide a few things so we get more space here. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me get my slides up <laughs> from terminal. So Today, we are going to talk about uh, WPCLI and how it can help you make things faster, do tasks that you don't really like, automate things a bit. And, you know, today when we talk about um, CLI tools, like we have so many and do we really need another one? Well, yeah, of course we do. WPCLI is not just the most powerful tool you can use to do stuff to WordPress. It's also fun and it's not scary. People usually tell me it's kind of scary like doing things in terminal and you have to memorize commands. Well, there are things to make this easier, uh, things to remember and makes everything easier. And it's all practice. And when you write code, it's also, you know, you, you cannot make a typo because you will get the, uh, undefined function error. So um, when we talk about using WPCLI, you can you do that on different levels. You don't have to start using it right away, like completely. You can start with little things. So the first thing you can try uh, and practice is uh, when you install fresh WordPress and there are no plugins, just default theme, everything that you can do there you can do with WPCLI in terminal. You can try all that. And that first level of using WPCLI, I like to call Guildhall level. But then you want more, of course you do. You want to import and export database. You want to list Chrome jobs, everybody does. And in WordPress dashboard, you need to have additional plugin to do that. You need to install plugin for exporting, importing database. There is excellent plugin about of, um, Chrome jobs. And you can do that with plugins. With WPCLI, you don't need plugins to do that. You can just you know, do it on fresh install. Now, this level of using WPCLI, I like to call the Pi Piper level. And now you see how making it, uh, doing stuff with WPCLI is kind of, you know, easier than doing it in dashboard, uh, but there is more. Of course there's more. Now you maybe don't want to export the whole database. Sometimes databases are huge and all you need is maybe you know, just a custom post type and not all posts. Maybe you just want specific posts from this to that date and maybe just from this author. Well, guess what? There is no plugin for that. Not yet. And we don't need it because we have WPCLI. We can do it with just one command, but that's not all. With WPCLI, you can scaffold so many things and you can make your life as a developer so much easier and we will see today uh, scaffold command we will try to to make something and now when we enter the level of you know uh, doing things in with WPCLI that you cannot do in dashboard which is the neo level mm -hmm. 
uh, now you might be thinking, okay, so that's it, you know, PWP Silva, you can do that. No, there is more. With scaffold command and another subcommand, you can create your own custom WPCLI commands. Now, why would you do that? There are so many commands, right? Well, some very smart plugin authors and hosting companies have been doing this for years. There is a huge use case for this. You will see a smart plugin author, but let me just tell you about hosting companies. So you get a new project, you log in to your hosting panel and you take a look and oh my Gutenberg, there is SSH. Mm, can you have access to it? But then you look even further and you find WPCLI is available. Hmm, you're flirting, what? But then you look even further and you see that this company created their own custom WPCLI commands so you can do stuff on their server faster and, you know, just easy. Well, that new level of awesomeness is, is the robot level. So now you want to use it. I convinced you completely and we are going to try to use it. Um, so I don't have any computer or server without it. So I'm not going to show you how to install it, but there is a documentation and you can take a look. It, you, all you need is three and a half commands, I swear. It's just, it's simple as that. Uh, so this one, first command, you download it. You download this par, which is PHP archive, and it's working already. So basically it's just one command. And then you run this half of command, which is PHP WPCLI par info to check if it's working, it's working. But you don't want to type PHP WPCLI par every time you want to run command, right? So what you do is you run this command to change, uh, to make it executable. And then you move this to somewhere in your pad so you can execute it from everywhere. Now, the most common naming is, see this one, WP, the last one. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. The way you will start typing command is determined by this, uh, that you call it this file, how you call it in your pad. Now, just be careful. Once you start using it, you will do a lot of copy pasting from Stack Overflow and documentation and other sources. So you might want to make it the common sense. And I have to say here that officially, uh, WPCLI doesn't support Windows out of box, Windows as operative system. Uh, there are options to include the whole Ubuntu now in, in Windows. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, tutorials online. Uh, what you might experience is that some commands are not behaved uh, as we would expect on Linux and Mac uh, machines. Uh, so that is why it's useful to get the whole Ubuntu in your windows and then run it. I've been uh, giving workshops uh, for WPCLI in local community and a lot of people came with windows and there were prob problems with the uh, shell command and you know additional things that come just come with Linux and Mac uh, and it's just working out of box. So make sure to with that, it's possible to have it, so please don't be discouraged. Uh, it's possible to have it working with Windows. You just need the Ubuntu, and th there are probably uh, a lot of tutorials online that you can find. So now that we have it, we can type WP info, and you see the info about your system here. So I'm on Linux, I have PHP 8.2, and I have the latest 2.7.1 version of WPCLI. So let's start using it. But before we start, 
there are things to help you memorize how to use it. So when you look at terminal, it, it kind of looks like, what should I tap now? But I have graphic user interface, I just click, right? Well, I'm the opposite person. I don't like to memorize where to click and uh, where to go. I just like to do things from one centralized place. And you can memorize things um, in, in this way. There is a anatomy of WPCLI command. So first you type WP or whatever you call that file in your pad. Then we have none, which is uh, entity you want to work with. And there are a lot of entities and it's not 100% consistent. Now there, there will be uh, commands that first start with verb, but majority is starting with none. And after that, you have verb. This is um, what you can do with this entity, what you want to do with this entity. And you will find that many entities have the same verbs, like add, remove, create, generate. Uh, so there will be consistency there as well to help you uh, memorize things. After that, if this is too... Um, global for you, if this uh, is not enough refined for you, you can use flags, which are parameters or arguments, depending on the command, that you can really refine your uh, query or your search or uh, whatever the command is about. At, and at any point, you have a number of global parameters available help being one of the most helpful ones, right? And you can use it at any level. So you can use it with WP, with WP none, WP none verb. You can see everything, complete documentation in there. My favorite global parameter, which we will see today is prompt. That's like the most useful parameter in the whole world. So, let me show you how this help works. See, when you type help, you get all the uh, nuns here. Most of the, uh, it's usually just none. And you can do, you can type any of that and then uh, say help again. You get out of this by typing Q. So WP, for example, core, help. And then you see all the verbs you can use with core. So you, you will not mistake. Um, one second, please. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, I got a question about folks not being able to see the screen. Can other people see the screen? I see it. I see it fine. OK. Thank you so much for confirming. Um, yeah, I see it. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Monique, we are um, sharing the screen. So maybe you need to change your view settings. <laughs> Sorry about that, Milana. Thank you. No, yeah, sure. So even you have, when you scroll down, you have examples how to use this command. So you, th there will be, you know, examples for most of things, but not for everything, but you will see and you will get the hint how to do it and how to use. And then when you scroll even further down, you get a list of all global parameters. So you don't have to leave terminal at all. You don't have to go to documentation, but if you like how it looks like, you can go there as well. So let's talk about now, um, Use cases, let's talk about administration. So for example, uh, you have been working with a client uh, for in the past and you didn't hear from them for a long time. And they just emailed you saying that they cannot access their login URL. They tried WP admin, they tried logging, they tried everything they could, could think of, but they couldn't. It just kept sending them to 404 page. So this is because you were smart and you changed the login URL to increase the security of the website, right? 
Can you even advise your client to change it again so that even you don't know it? Let's pretend they did. So now nobody in the world knows this login URL. And you have two options. You can go to database if you have access and search, which is boring, or you can run one WP CLI command. So naturally you choose a WP CLI, right? So let's start doing that. We can do that as SSH at milana.dev. This is my imaginary client and my port 55656. And we are on remote server where I have WPCLI, right? So this is perfect world. We have SSH access and WPCLI available. It's not the latest version, but it's there. And it's good. There is only one problem with this. I haven't heard from this client for a long time. I don't know that port number. I don't know where's a file where I wrote that port number. And I might even not know if I have that file. So with WPCLI, I don't have to memorize any of that. I can use aliases. And alias, let me see if I have this alias, WPCLI. So alias is configuration of WPCLI on your computer. It has nothing to do with WordPress websites that you have on the computer. <clears throat> so that's why it's WP CLI. And then we have none, alias, and verb, list. And here you see I have a few of them. There is all, which you get created uh, as soon as you create one custom alias. And here is a client which you, you can see here SSH I use to log in. So what does this mean? I have connected my computer with this uh, remote server through SSH keys. And that's something you can find in tutorials online, how to do that is like basic administration. So once you do that, basically you uh, need three steps, you create a pair of keys, SSH keys on your computer. One is private, one is public. And uh, then you copy this public key to your remote server. One, the first time you create connection, it's a shake and you your computer puts that remote uh, server into your list of known hosts. And then you can just log in as I did, you know, with SSH command. So once you have that connection, you can create alias with WPCLI just by doing this. This is my, this is the path of WordPress on my remote server. And this is SSH, um, SSH command basically uh, that you use for logging into that remote server. And now we can use it like this, I say WP and then client. And then I type whatever command I would without alias as well. So let's check the version of core. It's 6.1, it's up to date, which is weird because this is client that didn't log in to their website for a long time. So let's fix this, this should be outdated WordPress version. So we will say WP client, it has to be typed correctly to work core. Now, whatever, whenever you want to change the version, you have to, if it's not the latest version that you would download uh, from WordPress.org, you have to use update. Now, because I'm changing, uh, it's not default version. I'm gonna say version and let's not go too far. Let's say 5.9. And because I'm going backwards, I need to say force. But you can see all of that in documentation. You don't have to memorize this. I just memorized it because I had worked with this client so many times. So now, 
it's 5.9. And now let's update this WordPress to current version, which you just do with core update. And look at that. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> you don't even have to go there. But I suggest you go there and check if everything's fine. So let's find that login URL if you didn't forget that we were talking about. So WP CLI, WP client. And I will use command for executing arbitrary PHP code, which is evil. I, I use the, that command so many times, it's even embarrassing to admit. Uh, so here I can just type any PHP code. I'm gonna say echo. And I happen to know WordPress, uh, WordPress function for getting login URL, which is WP login URL. Now this is enough, but um, I want to make it, uh, okay, let me show you. When we do this, yeah, we will get this login URL, but this will be, um, you know, part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add here a nice, oh, sorry. Right. Evil Echo WP Login URL. And now I'm going to add um, new line here so that it prints nicely and I can just click on it and open in my browser. So control and click on link. And here is my login URL. It's, you should have asked me, uh, this is my imaginary client. So this task could take a long time. It could take hours that you cannot log. You cannot take money for that. Like, you know, spending two hours searching for password. Uh, so the, the possible workflow would be you reply to clients, like, do you have posting credentials? And they reply, no, I don't. And then you start searching through your computer and you search and you can't find it. After two hours, meanwhile, client replied, oh, I found it, here it is. And then you go there and you realize you have to open a ticket with support. And it takes a lot of time frustrating time that you cannot take money for. And with WPCLI, this took just a second. And you can, if you start now, you can create a database of your, all, all websites that you've been working on, and it will be in your WPCLI uh, config file. You don't have to search for files. Everything will be in your WPCLI config. And you will not even need to go there because you will have aliases so you can do all that. And in two years, trust me, you will love yourself. So that's about administration. Let's talk about security. So I'm going to show you one local website that I have. Lock. And this is a um, fresh install from. Um, last night for version, right. So here, let me show you the users we have. WP user, please. So again, none and verb. Um, this is default and I went with the stereotype. So I have admin and admin and role is administrator. That is default. And if we go to dashboard, so WP admin is another command that you can use for going to uh, login URL. And we didn't use it with the alias because it behaves 
unexpectedly with uh, remote servers because all the servers are different and he doesn't know exactly. It's not always the same uh, path to um, WordPress. So that's why WPCLI don't know exactly uh, where to go. So uh, this, let me just log in. Uh, so admin command doesn't come with WPCLI right away. You have to install it. Uh, and by installing it, it's just one command to run in terminal. So it's, it's pretty easy. So let's take a look at the access this admin has. Now, I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, know exactly what's happening here. And I'm not saying this because I think you don't know it. I'm saying it because there is a point, so bear with me, please. Uh, I just want to make it uh, to emphasize the access this um, default user has. So they have posts and uh, categories and tags, and they can create pages. And they have uh, th there are themes. They can add new themes. They have access to site editor. Uh, they can install new plugins, manage all the users, and in tools. They can do everything, import, export. They can edit team and plugin files from dashboard in 2023. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. They can edit PHP files from WordPress dashboard. And they have access to all settings. And when you freshly install WordPress, uh, you get this first post published by default. It's hello world. And default themes usually show the user because we have only one user. This is author of the post. And this is the same user that has all the access there. So now that we have this username, all we need is a password, right? And it's not a secret. WordPress websites get hacked a lot. I like to think of it because we are very popular kids and that's great, but you don't want your website or the client, your client's website to be the tool to measure WordPress popularity, right? So you want to make it more secure. And you know, if we were talking about WordPress in 2009, we could say, yes, WordPress is a security hole on server, but this is not that time anymore. Now WordPress is secure but it still gets hacked. Now, why is that? It's because of you know, human interference. So there are like things like uh, uh, very light passwords, easily breakable. There are things like, oh, I saw this great plugin. It's doing all this great stuff, but it costs like 60 bucks on this market. And I found it for free on this website. So I installed it. Hmm. Don't you think if something sounds too good to be true, that it is too good to be true, right? So a lot of things happen, uh, like adding uh, unchecked code, um, suspicious code, and making passwords not strong enough, even though there, there are efforts, and you can see it in WordPress dashboard, like when you when you're password is not strong enough, you have to check that you agree with password not being strong enough. Uh, so there are efforts, but things still happen, especially when you just first install WordPress. It's like, oh, okay, never mind. This is, let's just uh, put some password there. It's usually including year or date of your birth. And if you have your birthday celebrated on your social networks, everybody knows what is the date or year of your birthday. So they know right away the part of your password. So what we wanna do to make this WordPress secure, it's pretty obvious when user is a problem, then remove the user, right? No, we can't remove the user. We are making websites for users. But what we can do is we can go around the user. So. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna demote this administrator, not remove it, not delete it, 
just demote them. But let's first see what verbs can we use with user. So WP user help. And here we can add capability, add role, track password. Now here comes what uh, is consistency all about, create, delete, generate, get list. You can import users as CSV. You can remove capability, role, spam, term, and spam. With update, you can change users' password. So if you have friends and you're sharing WordPress and you want to have some fun, you know, I'm not judging anything that rocks your boat. So let's do WP user remove role. Now, the next parameter WPCLI needs to know which user, even though we have only one user, it needs to know which user. You can use user ID or uh, username or email. I happen to know ID is one, that's just the easiest. And now what we have here is admin without role. You see it's empty. Let's see what that means. Now take a look at admin bar here. There is There are things they can do. And now when we reload the page, it's gone. And when you try to go to dashboard, nothing happens. Because when you don't have a role, WordPress doesn't know what to do with you. This admin has less access than subscriber. So now this WordPress is secure, right? But we don't have any user that can do anything inside. And we want to use it as CMS, which it is. So I'm going to create another user, WP user create. So now there are parameters that are mandatory. There are parameters that are optional. I don't know which one. Well, I know I practice for this, but I don't want to know. I don't want to memorize and I don't have to. What I can do is use my the most useful global parameter in the world, which is prompt. And it will prompt you with all the parameters there are. So user login, let me just say author. User email doesn't really matter because this is uh, local, but let it, let's make it a block. Now role, if you see this is in square brackets, it means it's not mandatory anymore. The, these first two ones are, um, Mandatory, the role is not mandatory, but default role is subscriber, I believe. And I want author, so I'm gonna just say it here. User password. Now this one should be strong, the same as the one for uh, admin should be strong, especially this one, because this user will have access to dashboard, but I need to log in with this user in a minute. So bear with me, let's pretend this is a very strong password and everything else, I don't care, right? It's just next, next, next. So we created new user and now WP user list. You see, we have admin and we have author. Now I forgot to say that even though we will remove a row from admin and they will have no access, you should keep that password strong because you want your hackers to be amused. You don't want to disappoint them. So let's log in here with author and see what they can do. Not much. So they can create new posts, but they cannot do anything with existing posts. They never heard about taxonomies like categories and tags. They can't create new pages. They haven't seen themes or plugins, no editing, PHP files in dashboard, nothing. They have really, really limited access. So now we have these two users. One has no access at all. The other one has very limited access. While in WP CLI, we can do this, WP plugin. Install 
activate and I'm going to use simple history. Now, if you remember what we talked about is at the beginning, this is the smart plugin author. They created their own custom WPCLI command. Why? Because you can see the list of everything that happened. This is what this plugin does. It shows you the list of everything that happened in your WordPress install since the plugin was installed. But this list in dashboard is accessible only to people who have access and we don't have user with that access. So we can do that here. Simple history. So this was a very smart decision to create custom WPCLI command and to keep it consistency. The WP simple history list. And I can see everything here in terminal, what happened in my WordPress install while no one can access that in dashboard. Now, how about that? When you talk about security, it's great, right? But if this author was your client, they would want more access and they should have more access. However, the next row after author is editor and they have just too much access for my taste. I don't like it at all. So we can choose something in between, right? But there is no role for that. We can use capabilities. That is what actually defines access and permission in WordPress. Roles are just groups of uh, uh, capabilities, but the capability is what makes things happen. So if you create new role and give it to user, this user would be like our admin. They would no they would have no access at all. But if you add capabilities to it, then they will be able to do stuff. And these capabilities are really small parts of access and permissions. And that's great because you can refine every a uh, dashboard experience. Now you don't have to go that far. You don't have to make it unique for every user. You can find what is in between, what is it that works for you. And now I'm gonna give some capabilities to this author. I'm gonna say WP user add capability. By the way, have you, re uh, have you noticed that when I type tab, it completes the command? Yes. There are autocompletes, uh, tab completions for WPCLI, and you can find that on that same install WPCLI page in documentation. So WP user add capability. Again, we need to say which user. I know this user is uh, having the number two. And now let's see what capabilities we want to get, give them. Uh, first, I want to give them the ability to manage categories. What this will do, this will give them access to categories and tags. Then I want to give them capability to switch themes and do the same thing for plugins, which is activate plugins. Now, what that means, they will not be able to add new themes or plugins. See, no adding, but they can switch between existing themes. Also with plugins, there is no option to add new ones, but they can activate and deactivate existing plugins. Now, why is this important? When something goes wrong with your WordPress, this is the first advice you will get from support, from forums, anywhere you ask. Switch to the default theme and deactivate all plugins and start activating one by one to see where the problem is. So I think everybody should be able to do those two things, to switch themes and activate and deactivate plugins. What we don't want, and we still, we have achieved that, we don't want any code to be introduced into this WordPress install 
by plugins or themes that we haven't looked. You have to give your developer uh, all the information that you are putting in, not just my site doesn't work anymore. So leave breaking the website to developers. That's our job. And you just happily write blog posts and pages and run your shops and, you know, just be awesome site owner. Now, there is another capability that many themes and plugins and also WordPress core is using uh, to hide some permissions. Uh, so that is edit theme options. And with this, in core WordPress, you get access to this site editor. And as I said, teams are putting some team options behind that uh, capability and also some plugins, depending on functionality, they allow you to do it only if you have the uh, capability to edit team options. And you can do, you can add many other things. These four are like things I memorized and I'm not making this up. So we have rows and capabilities here in WordPress documentation. And if you haven't seen, this is our new website. This is how documentation is looking since last week or past two weeks. Uh, and we have new URL keyword here, documentation. So it can be found at wordpress.org documentation, article, rows, and capabilities. And here you have a list of all rows that exist. As I said, this is just a group of capabilities. And here you see the list of all capabilities for each row. Now these rows are, uh, the smallest row has the last capabilities. The next row has everything this row has and some additional, and it, it's, you know, gradually increasing, but you can create roles with capabilities that are not really in uh, previous ones. And you can create whatever you want. You can be very creative here. And you can even see if you click here. So edit pages, that's something author should have. Um, you can see what it, uh, what capability is doing, what access it gives you. So now this author with some more capabilities can really have enough access to own the website, but not enough to break it. Please leave that to us developers. And you can, you know, find that fine line between uh, dangerous and uh, safe and, you know, created for every client. I believe that's our uh, responsibility to do that for every client to find where is this line and to give them that access. And now we can start talking about development. So I'm going to stay in this, um, in this same WordPress and I've been talking about scaffold, but before that, I told you that many entities have the same verb. One of them is generate. So we generate subcommand. You can generate uh, dummy content like posts, pages, menus, comments, users, anything you need. And it's interesting, you know, to First type it like WP post generate, and then you there are parameters you can make it different. By default, the, the number of items to be created is 100. So you can fill up pretty fast. And it's interesting to do it once, but you don't want to do it so many times. Every time you need to uh, get some dummy content, and it's good that you don't have to. With Terminal, when you start using WPCLI with other tools, you can make things very efficient. So you can create a bash script. And in this bash script, you can just put all commands for generating dummy content. And then when you install WordPress, you just run that command. It's just one word that you define and your WordPress gets populated. But that's a boring job. Now let's do something interesting. Let's see what can be scaffold.
So right now, you still can scaffold block with the WPCLI, but it will be uh, retired because there is a script, a WordPress script, create block, I believe, uh, and it's doing great job. So this will, it will be pointless to keep working on uh, two sides and you know making making things complicated. So that will not be available in next uh, WPCLI uh, version, I believe. But uh, we can still create child team. We can create package. Now this package is not coming with WPCLI out of box. It's another command and it's used for generating uh, your own custom WPCLI command. Uh, then we can create plugin and post type and tests for, pay, for plugins and themes and taxonomy and underscores, which is um, classical, classic theme. Um, it's pretty outdated, but if you are still using classic themes, uh, you can try it out. It's like really easy to create a new theme. So what we are going to create now, scaffold, is plugin. And again, there are parameters that I don't want to memorize. Slug, so, let's call it learn. Directory name, if I want it different than my slug, I can type it here, but I don't want it. And you can see the only uh, required parameter is slug. Everything else is uh, optional. Plugin name, let's say WP learn, plugin description, we don't have a time, plugin outer WordPress community, uh, outer URI, skip test, don't. Uh, continuous integration provider, by default, WordPress is using Travis for a project, but if you have something different in mind, you can define it here. Activate, yes, please. Activate network. I don't have network here, so I don't care. And of course, if I had another plugin with the same folder name or the same slug, uh, I could overwrite it with force, but I don't have that plugin. And we created plugin. Let's go and see what we have done. Learn. So, you see here, we have a bin with some useful scripts there you can use and you can add more. Uh, NPM is ready. Also writing tests is ready. You can just start writing it. Uh, there is a grunt file. So grunt is default task runner for WordPress project up until Gutenberg uh, showed up. Now, since Gutenberg, we are seeing more the uh, backpack being default task runner, but grunt file, you know, grunt is still used and it's working. And this grunt file has a very useful uh, task. It will create, it will scan all your PHP files and your JavaScript files, uh, and it will create a pod file for translations. So, it is useful, you can convert it to Webpack if you want, and you can just keep it like that and keep adding your own stuff. What I wanna show you is this readme file. So let's do, let's open in Vim so that we can see how to close it, right? Readme. And you see, this is not just empty TXT file. This is a template. If you want to host this plugin at wordpress.org, you don't have to go to plugin documentation and search for what files you have to have there uh, and how readme text files should look like. It is all here. And you can see it collected all the data that we uh, typed in while scaffolding this plugin. So what you have to do is just put what is unique for your own Plugging, you don't have to reinvent things that have been copy pasted for decades now. And how do we get out of uh, Vim? So first type escape, so you get out of 
editing mode, then you have um, column. Yes, it's column. Uh, or yeah, it's column. And then Q as a quick, and we are off. So now we know how to exit, how to close the view. And let me show you. Well, not show you. Let's let's create this plugin. This plugin is doing nothing. So I'm gonna open it in Nano. Um, it's learn PHP file. Here we have some um, syntax highlighting. And you see, again, this is what we entered when we were scaffolding. Everything is there. So our code can start here. And let's do a simple function, um, learn the title, always prefix your functions, we are going to pass title. And this will be a very small function. We're going to return escape HTML and always prepare your strings for translation. Um, by the way, these spaces between bracket in, inside the brackets, it's WordPress coding standard. So what are we going to do here? Say learn WordPress and our text domain is learn. And we are going to append this title. Close it and let's hook it to a filter. Filter is called the title. And our callback is learn the title. I like to have the name of the hook inside of my callback na name. So just prefix it and I know exactly what's happening. Uh, okay, we can save this and let's hope we didn't break anything. But even if we did, that's not a problem. And here it is, our plugin learn. And what this plugin does is it adds learn WordPress before every uh, occurrence of the title function. Now, see, it's not very useful. <laughs> And I'm happy it doesn't do that in menus anymore. That was fixed. So before this filter was, would add here to menu, learn WordPress sample page, but now it's not. And that's great thing. And this plugin is not <laughs> useful, but this plugin was created during my workshop in like a few minutes in terminal. We didn't open code editor, we did it in terminal. And this plugin could pass a code review for wordpress.org and it could live at wordpress.org. Why? Because it's useful, because this function is so great? No, because it has everything wordpress.org expects plugin to have. It follows coding standards, it has README, it has uh, task runner, it has tests, everything, and we didn't do any of that. It was in scaffold command. So please do yourself a favor, make your development faster and more efficient. You can just run one command and start typing your code. You don't have to worry about anything else and it will be you will be better developer for it just you know going through the files and see what's there and you will know what's needed for wordpress.org by the way if you want to create a plugin and you will save some things to database what you also need is uninstall php file please clean up after your plugin is uninstalled thank you that was unpaid commercial so now we still haven't break anything, right? It, it's weird. We are talking about WordPress. So let's let's break something. Let's go to this. No, let's go to 
let's activate login uh, activate hello and let's break it <laughs> no no um hello now we have to get out of learn um right um let's do the little nightmare for developer and just remove this semicolon yes and let's go here and you see there has been a critical error on this website this is helpful not uh what we want to do well if this was production we do want this to be displayed uh, so that no one can see the errors on our website but how we can make this faster you know the the workflow in real life would be oh my god it doesn't work so can i reproduce it in my local no my local is working staging is working only production doesn't work so i have to download all the files i have to find the error uh, and then i have to identify how to fix it and then fix it and then put it on staging and test it and if it's working then i put it on production and it's been at least 24 hours and website was that but with WPC Live, I can run just any command uh, as long as plugins are loaded. So if you think of how WordPress is loading, it's first the core and then must use plugins. And then there is a parent team and then there's a child team. And no, it's child team and then parent team. So what we want to do is we want to run command, something that will load the whole WordPress so we get that error, we get that in our output. So we can say WP team list, whatever, it doesn't matter. And here we have our error. Now this error is um, what we see on front end and it's not useful, but before that we get the real PHP error that we can use. So there's unexpected variable lyrics in hello PHP uh, file on line 46. So the actual PHP error that is useful. So we can go here and go to line 46. Sorry, I typed something. Yes. Um, Okay, here you see this lyrics is unexpected because this was missing. And now if we go back, everything is fixed. Now in real life, you might not fix it that fast. You know, the problem will be much more than that. But what you will know is which plugin is causing it. And you can then just deactivate from WPC Lite that plugin or just switch to default team, depending on where the error is. And the, the site is alive, not having all the functionality perhaps or not looking the same, but it is alive and you can fix it uh, in your local and you you can take your time and test it and then put it back to production so it will save you a lot of time and especially if it's about uh, if the website is a shop that is you know living from being alive uh, earning money then you want it to be alive and not to uh, have error there like and, and people waiting for it to come back. At, at least I know by myself when I find the website that on first load, it's an error. I don't care, I just move on. So you don't want that to happen. And now that we broke and fixed things, it's time for magic. 
Let's go to my magic folder. See, there is nothing in this folder. It's completely empty. And I'm going to say WP install. And Milana, I just yeah. wanted to know, uh, we are at the top of the hour. We do have a few okay. folks dropping out. Um, mm -hmm. So just wanted to be mindful of that. Thank you all for, for joining for the hour. Milana, I don't know how much longer you have for this session. Maybe minutes. there's people. Yeah. 10 more just, minutes. Yeah. Less, less than 10 minutes. It's five yeah. minutes. Awesome. Okay. So folks, if you have five more minutes to spare, please stay and, and learn just a little bit more um, from Milana. Okay. okay. So this is magic. So it will be fast. It's uh, database magic, database password is my root and database host. I don't need any of that. Site title is magic and site URL. Post magic and admin. And it's cooking, but soon it will be done. And we want to release the Kraken. We want to release the Kraken. And this is our Kraken. So what happened here, you see magic.lock. Uh, it's a new website that is just installed. And this magic, uh, is not magic at all. It is a uh, a bash script um, wp install. My custom bash script for installing WordPress. And here you can see how it looks like. Uh, it's pretty simple. We have this uh, shebang here, and that is common to start a script. And after that, we say which shell we want to use. We want to use bash. And after that, you just type in the commands as you would type them in a uh, terminal. So you don't have to type them anymore. The way you have uh, named this script, it will uh, run. So if you remember, my last command was wp install. This is just the name of the script. And I made it executable and put it in my path so I can uh, execute it from any place I want. And then with just a little bit of bash scripting, I, I collect the data so I can run config create. And I don't want to type this ever again. I don't want to memorize. I don't want to think if I need any other parameter, I just add prompt and you know, the sensitive stuff like passwords are uh, hidden. That is bash scripting. I even, you know, give myself a little cheer here. And I use rewrite structure here. For that, you need to have a uh, mode rewrite, Apache mode, uh, PHP uh, to uh, mode enabled uh, to be able to use a rewrite structure. So what I have here, when I go to hello world, you see, I have clean permalink, while here, this is our old one, I have index.php. That's what happens when you install a website with uh, WPCLI, but you can fix that with this rewrite uh, command. And after that, this is just a little bit of uh, you know Linux fun, and I get to open admin. So this is pretty simple. It's just for uh, five, uh, WPCLI command, you can make it as difficult, as complicated as you want, or just simple. You can add to it that script for uh, generating dummy content. And when you run it, you just laugh out loud because you are never going to type that again. And it's completely automated. So I hope this was fun. I hope you um, learn something. I hope you uh, see the potential in uh, WPCLI for your work. My name is Milana Tsap. I'm WordPress engineer at XWP and the loudest member of the documentation team. And you can find me on these 
places. If you want to chat about WPCLI or documentation or, you know, classical music, anything. Uh, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Milana. We had a request for your script. Is there a good way to share that with folks? I don't know if yeah. chat is the best yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we will not uh, share it in chat. I will have it in GitHub so you can take it. Oh, awesome. So I'll share the link mm -hmm. um, for the GitHub. Yeah, uh, I, I, will, I will send you a link and afterward. yeah. It will be Amazing. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> thank you. And thank you.